but this is a 2004 Mazda 3 and I've got the remote here and you can see it's got a lock and unlock button and there's a fault unfortunately you can see I press unlock uh, doesn't work I press lock uh, there it did work unlock doesn't work and what's happening here is it's intermittent sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and I'm going to show you what's wrong with this remote and show you how to fix it let's do it right here is the remote and you'll see there's no screw so what you're going to do is you can either use your nail or you can use a screwdriver and you gently separate the sides as you can see I've gently separated it use your nail go along the seam and voila it pops open now you can press on these you'll see that this uh, little circuit board comes out it's got a little rubber seal here and there's your problem if you have a look in there there are the little buttons which have uh, have broken off the main board right this is a multimeter and what i'm doing is i'm just doing a continuity test which shows that there's a short circuit so you can see when i put the leads together and you can see on the screwdriver it's a dead short Right, so the buzzer signals are short, and I'm just going to show you these little buttons. So I'm first going to test them. See, as I depress the button, it's showing it's a short circuit, so there's nothing wrong with the button. It's just come off the circuit board. I'll test this one. Right, so all we need to do is solder this back onto the circuit board. Okay, just start the repair without the battery in. So I'm just going to take the battery out. There we go. And you've got to slide it out because it's uh, there's a wedge there and there so don't just pull it out slide it out you'll need a soldering iron I've got one over here and you'll just need some solder this is the solder you don't need a lot now I'm just cleaning the soldering iron tip but if you've got a small tip smaller than this but I'm just going to use this bigger tip just to show you that even if you haven't got the exact right tool it, you can still get the job done now the first thing you want to do is you want to put some solder on the circuit board itself. Now if your soldering iron has a temperature adjustment, I suggest you don't make it too hot. Uh, under 350 is fine because remember these are very small components and you'll overheat them and you could destroy them. So I would put it at about 300, somewhere about there. So I'm just going to add some extra solder there and there. Don't need to put too much. Now you can either do this by hand or with a set of uh, long nose pliers. There's the little switch and I'm going to position it on there and as I solder it, it's going to solder to the back little uh, uh, solder spots on the switch. If you have a look there you can see there are the two solder pads which I'm going to solder onto the main board. Now while it's on and it does work, you can see that it's raised. So we don't want it raised, so I'm just going to make it flat, otherwise it will come off again. So gently put the soldering on there, but for less than three seconds, and apply a bit of pressure on both sides, pressing it down. Alright, now as you can see the first one has been soldered on. Uh, very important is uh, you can see that it's flat on the PC board. If it is raised it will wobble and it will break off the solder. The solder will tear. So what you need to do is make sure it's flat and try to get it straight. There is a little resistor, surface mount resistor here on the side. If you happen to desolder it, it's fine. Just resolder it back on. Now as you can see this particular remote has space for three buttons and I had soldered over there but I actually meant to solder there. This is my particular remote is a two button so I must just solder over here. Now you might want to use long nose pliers and just seat it over there like that and gently solder the one side. There we go. Flip it and solder the other side. Now again, it's very important that it sits flush on the PC board. As you can see, uh, there's no gap there. So this is now soldered. You can go and test it. Right now, notice this uh, 
can wobble if you force it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue here. Now this step is extra. You do not have to do this. Uh, if you are going to use glue, you could use some alarm glue just to uh, support it. But keeping in mind, this glue does take time to dry. And when you put this back on, you don't want to glue the rubber onto the circuit board. So whatever you do, just make sure the glue is dry when you are finished. I'm going to use super glue. So there's my super glue. I'm just going to put a tiny bit. Now, be very careful with super glue and electronics. Uh, super glue and electronics don't go very well together. And that's it. You can see just a tiny amount. I'm not really not trying to uh, to get the glue. Uh, I'm, I'm, the glue is really just to offer a bit of support. So I don't want the glue going anywhere inside that switch. And what you can even do is put a little bit on a screwdriver like that, and then use that to to just uh, put it on the circuit board. You really don't want to blob glue on the circuit board. So as I said, this is an extra step. Um, my advice is don't do this unless you're very comfortable working with these glues. The worst thing you can do is get super glue to drip in there, then the switch is finished. You can chuck it away. Right, now another optional step. This is called contact chemi. It's a contact cleaner. And all I do is I just spray a tiny drop into the switch and what it does is it deoxidizes any of the oxides that are between the contacts. So you can see just a tiny amount. And now I can press, you just press it a few times like that. And that will keep your switches working for very long. Totally uh, deoxidizes it and cleans it. Right, so this is now ready to be reassembled. I'm going to I'll put the battery in because I did go and test it. It does work. And I'm just going to now take this opportunity to put a brand new battery in. Right, so you slide the battery in, uh, in the opposite way that you took it out. If you want to take the battery out, you can just flip it like that, and the battery comes out. Remember, don't break it out, you just slot it in and slot out. Right, so this is now ready. All I'm going to do is, I'm just going to wipe the uh, little rubber here. I just use something called rubbing alcohol. Just put a little bit on a, on a, a cloth, and I'll just wipe this quickly. And the reason why I use a rubbing alcohol is it removes oil. Right, I've just cleaned all around the seams and now I can reinstall this. So that goes in there first, like that. And the seats in there, like that. And then the back cover goes on, just like that. Make sure that it's uh, coming out the other side there. And squish it together and the remote is now complete. I'll just show it to you working. Right, unlock, lock, unlock, lock. You can see, lock, unlock, working perfectly. And even if I drop it, pass the drop test. There we go, working perfectly. All right, so total time took me about 15 minutes, but I did also video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.